The type of intermolecular force. What are intermolecular forces? Those are things like London forces, dipole-dipole, um, hydrogen bonding. We also have the iron ones, like iron dipole. You know, it's all of those things. It's not covalent ionic metallic. That's intramolecular, not inter. Molecular. Okay, so the type of intermolecular force involved when CO2 is added to water. Oh, okay. So let's go draw a CO2 molecule. Now you've got to get this right. So here's a periodic table. Now we're going to go do Lewis diagrams for both of these because, and, and maybe you know these already because you've practiced them enough, but if not, we need to make sure we do this correctly to be able to tell whether the molecules are polar or nonpolar. Okay, so CO2. CO2. So the way I like to do Lewis diagrams is I go to the carbon and I look at how many valence electrons. So that's one, two, three, four. So it's in group four. So it's got four valence electrons. Okay, so carbon has got four valence electrons. Okay, let's write this properly. Come, Kev. Let's not take chances here and shortcuts. Okay, so <laughs> carbon is uh, four valence electrons. Oxygen is um, in group six, so oxygen has six, but there's two of them, okay? So then if you add up all the electrons, there are four plus six, which is 10, 10 plus six is 16. So we have 16 total valence electrons for carbon dioxide, okay? So now, the rule of Lewis diagram says, always put the least Electronegative. Okay, it would be great if you could write nicely, my dude. Sorry, guys, my hands are freezing. It's cold. It's winter. Do you mind? Always put the least, the least electronegative atom in the middle. Exception. There is an exception to the rule. Okay, Kev, just calm down, dude. You sound like a Karen. Okay, sorry, guys. I just got excited. There is an exception to the rule, <laughs> and that is. Um, hydrogen. So hydrogen always goes on the outside. Always goes on the outside. Okay. So if we look at carbon and oxygen, if we look at carbon's electronegativity is 2.5. If you look at oxygen, it's 3.5. So carbon is the least electronegative. So it says here, um, always put the least electronegative in the middle. Okay, so there's carbon. And then we can just put oxygen and oxygen okay now what you do next is you go put you remember we only have 16 electrons to use always go put a bonding pair between all of the atoms a bonding pair comes in a comes in two okay a pair is two now we've used how many electrons so we've used two over there two over there so we've used four so how many do we have left well 16 minus 4 is 12. What you do is you go put pairs of two now on all of the outside atoms. Okay, so let's do that. There we go. I think we've used everything. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Okay, now the last step is to make sure that all of the electron, I mean, all of the atoms are surrounded by eight electrons, except for hydrogen. Remember hydrogen? does not obey the octet rule. With hydrogen, it only needs to be surrounded by two electrons. So the octet rule says that all of the other atoms must be surrounded by eight. Yes, there are one or two other exceptions, but they're not that common, okay? So this oxygen is happy. Why? Because it's surrounded by eight. This oxygen is happy. Why? Because it's surrounded by eight. This carbon is sad because it's only surrounded by four. So what we'll do is we'll take these two, for example. You could have also taken those two. It doesn't really matter. I just think it looks nice and neat if I do it those two. And then you could take those two and just put them on the inside. We're allowed to do that because you have not taken the electrons away from this oxygen. It can still see them. See there? They're still part of the eight that this oxygen can see. This carbon now has eight, so it's happy. And this oxygen still has eight, so it's happy. Now, when it comes to knowing if this is, uh, if this molecule is um, polar, non-polar, well, we need to look at the different dipole moments and we need to try to figure out what's going on. So if you look at oxygen, um, oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5, carbon is 2.5. What does electronegativity mean again? Well, electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract bonding pair 
electrons. So these are bonding pair electrons, okay? Now, if the electronegativity number is high, such as with oxygen, it means, or it's higher than carbon, so it means that oxygen is like, where the electrons at? I want electrons. All I care about in my life is electrons, 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 because I have a high electronegativity, so just give me electrons. Give me, give me, give me, okay? So that means the electrons are actually gonna be wanting to go closer to oxygen, okay? And so we show this with a little arrow showing that the electrons would move that way, okay? So I'm just gonna do it like that. Right, now of course this is gonna be the same on here, so the electrons are gonna go here, now, if you just look at the fact that this arrow is gonna go that way, that arrow is gonna go that way, can you see that overall, this molecule is gonna be completely balanced, okay? It's not gonna cause electrons to, um, or everything is, it's, it's, it's a completely balanced. There's no, there's no net dipole moment. You know, like in physics, I'm like in, in, in physics, physics, where you've got Newtons and, 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 and all of that, you get net forces. But if, if the forces to the right and the forces to the left, everything's balancing out. And so there's no net force or no net dipole moment. So this molecule is actually gonna be completely non-polar. This is a non-polar molecule. Now, if we had to go do water, because that's water vapor, it's just the, um, a different phase of water, but it's still water. So we know that water is H2O. Now, you've maybe done this many times, so you can ignore my explanations now, but with water, um, so remember you always put the least electronegative in the middle, but we said ex hydrogen is an exception. So we're gonna put oxygen in the middle. Now, listen, the way I'm gonna draw this is not correct, but just hear me out, okay? So this is what a lot of learners do, and it's okay to do this at first, and then you must correct yourself a little bit later, and I'll show you how to know that you need to correct yourself. Check this out. So we're gonna go draw the Lewis diagram on water, okay? And so hydrogen has one valence electron, because here it is in group one, okay? So hydrogen has one, the other hydrogen also has one, and then oxygen has six. So we have eight electrons in total. So we have eight valence electrons. Now we said that you should always go put a bonding pair between all of the atoms. Now we still have four electrons to use because we've just used four and we had eight in the beginning. So we still got four left. Now what we said earlier was you are supposed to take the remaining four electrons and go put them on the outside. But hydrogen is already satisfied. Hydrogen already has its two. So you don't put them on the outside if it's hydrogen, you actually just go put them on the inside. Now that is what a lot of learners would do. Now, all you need to remember is that these over here are called lone pairs, okay? And what you need to remember is that lone pairs change the shape of molecules, okay? And so this is where you should remember now, your teacher in class rather draws the oxygen, I mean the, the water, like this. And we call this the angular, or you could, some teachers call it the bent shape. And so this is what water actually looks like. It makes like a L shape, like that, okay? It's not like that, because if you leave it like that, you're gonna think that water is a non-polar molecule when you go do the arrows, okay? But Kevin, why didn't we do that over here? Well, this one didn't have any lone pairs. So lone pairs are what causes these problems. Okay, so moving on. So if we now look at the electronegativity of hydrogen, which is 2.1 and oxygen is 3.5, oxygen is like, hey yo, where's all the electrons? Come at me, bro, I just want electrons. <laughs> and so all the electrons are gonna go towards um, oxygen, like this. So if you look at these two arrows, would they cancel each other out? Definitely not. They would combine and the net dipole moment would probably go something like in that direction, okay? So does water have a net dipole moment? Yes, there will be a net dipole moment. That means water is a polar molecule. Things that have a net dipole moment are polar, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, what we have is we have a non-polar molecule next to a polar molecule. Now you should know your intermolecular forces well enough to be able to just summarize that when you have a non-polar with a polar, then you end up getting a dipole induced dipole. Let me explain what that means. Well, let me quickly summarize for you. So if you have a polar molecule and another polar molecule, then the intermolecular force there is called a dipole dipole. Okay, then if you have a polar molecule 
and a nonpolar molecule, then that is called a dipole induced dipole. Then if you have a, uh, a nonpolar molecule with another nonpolar molecule, then we call that a London force. If you have a polar with a iron, then we call this a um, iron dipole uh, force. And then if you have a nonpolar next to an iron, then you get an iron induced dipole. Okay, so yep, so here we had a polar and a nonpolar, and that's where I said dipole induced dipole. But yeah, go watch my other videos on intermolecular forces where I explain how the electrons cause those things to happen. But for this one, the answer is D.